ladies and gentlemen. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. City Hall. The base is 476 feet on its longitudinal axis. The tower goes up 452 feet above the level of Main Street. They put it up to stay. Limestone from France, marble from Tennessee, gray California granite. It was Tuesday, November 15th. It was cold in Los Angeles. We've been working the early watch out of Central Division, Detective Bureau. I got an emergency call to check back in at the office. An entire block in the heart of the city was facing sudden total destruction. We had 26 minutes to try and stop it. This is the story of those 26 minutes. We've been working the early watch out of Central Homicide. That's the all-night duty, 11 to 7. My partner's Ben Romero. He's a sergeant, so am I. The boss is Thad Brown, chief of detectives. My name's Friday. Take this car, it's the only one in service. Yeah. Ben? You made good time. I came as soon as I got the call. Come on down here. What is it, Skipper? Why don't I hush up? Come on. Years. Yeah, brother's name is Elwood. That's right. He's serving a year for car stripping. And that two-bit thief is sitting here in the city hall with a bomb in his lap? He's right in the next room. Well, what kind of a bomb is it? Do you think he's bluffing? Could be. Crime lab's not sure. Lee Jones from the lab get a look at it? Not a good look. You can't get near the guy. All right. What do you want us to do? Well, it's a volunteer job. You can take it or leave it. How do you want us to handle it? You sure you want a piece of this one, Romero? No, he doesn't. He's got a family. Get me another single man. We'll give it a try. Check out, Ben. Can't go home. My wife wants me to paint the bathroom today. What do we do? All right. Chandler's tried. Hannon, Olsen, Wiseman, they all tried. This guy kind of is no pushover. He knows what he's doing. Be careful. All right, Skip. Now, we're still checking to make sure everybody's out of the building. I'll be back on this floor in a minute. Is there anything else we ought to know? Any plan we ought to follow? Well, he's in there and he's got a bomb. Take it away from him. We had two big questions and we needed the answers fast. Was Vernon Carney holding a real bomb or was it only a harmless gadget? Was Carney ready to make good his promise to blow up the building by 9 o'clock? If it was true, we had 24 minutes to talk him out of it. I looked at my watch. It was 8.36.
What do you say to a man with a bomb? That's close enough. Smoke, Connie? No. What are you trying to prove? You know what I want. We're not going to let your brother out of jail. You got till nine o'clock to change your mind. You got 22 minutes. We go, you're going with us, Connie. Don't take much of a brain to figure that. What makes you think you can get away with it? I want my brother out of jail. He's only got a couple of months to go. He'll get out when he serves his time. Yeah, that's where you're wrong, cop. He gets out at 9 o'clock this morning. All right. Come on, Connie. Get your hand out of that box. Put the box on the table. You think I'm bluffing, don't you? I'm going to let you get within five feet before I make a liar out of you. Okay, Carney, I guess you mean it. You can take two more steps and find out for sure. Suppose we did let him out. We'd just pick him up again, you along with him. If you could find us. Now, let's get this straight. If we let your brother out, how do we know he'll keep your promise? What promise? I haven't made any promise. You get Elwood over here first, then we'll talk about it. And if we don't let him out, you say you'll pull the trigger on that bomb. What are you going to prove by that? It's 839. You got 21 minutes to go. Oh, come on. Give me an answer. Why do you want to kill a lot of innocent people? Don't try to con me. They cleared everybody out of this building 45 minutes ago. They cleaned out the whole block. Don't you think it's about time you send somebody over to get Elwood? What's to stop us from leaving? Just let you sit there and touch off that thing. Don't try to kid me. You'd let me sit here and blow up $10 million with the taxpayers' money? No. You're going to let Elwood out. you wait till the last minute to do it, but you let him out. I'm not convinced Connie can back up what he says. Then why didn't you take that box away from him? Yeah. We've located Connie's apartment. There's a detail out there checking it now. Pacelli and Morris. You got any ideas at all? Anything we could try? That's why I called you in. None of us have gotten any further along than you did just now. Well, how about us stopping Connie first? Yeah? I'm not top man on the pistol range, but I could wing him. And he falls and his reflex action pulls the trigger on the bomb? No, a gun's not the answer. There's just one thing I want to know for sure. Yeah, Friday. Will it go off or won't it? We all want to know. Either way, we got to get that box away from us. Brown thingy. Yeah. You did? Yeah. No, stay there. I'll call you. What'd he say? They found 28 sticks of dynamite in Connie's apartment. We knew now Carney wasn't kidding. We could see into the bomb through the glass window in one end. There was dynamite inside, there was dynamite in Carney's room. We didn't know if he had the nerve to pull the trigger. We couldn't be sure if it'd go off when he did. But with only minutes remaining, nobody wanted to take the chance. From here on in, all of us agreed that Vernon Carney sat in the next room, holding in his two hands a force powerful enough to destroy us all. I looked at my watch. It was 16 and a half minutes to nine. How do we get it away from him? Well, I got an idea. It might work. Let's have it. Well, Carney's sitting in the next office between two windows. Both of them are open. If we could get a man in through one of those windows, we might get Carney from behind. How are you going to get him? Well, whoever gets through the window could slug him. What do you do then? Well, somebody grabs the box. Crime Lab can tell us what to do with it. How do you get a man through the window? We're on the 11th floor. Well, there's some kind of a ledge runs around each story, isn't there? Wide enough for a man to walk on? I don't know. Let's have a look. That's pretty narrow, Joe. It's a good 18 inches. Could be done. No, Joe. Too risky. Strong wind out there, too, George. Tear a man right off the building. Yeah, I guess you're right. There still might be a way. How about a ladder? Eleven floors, Skipper? There might be a way. The fire department will know that. I'll get Battalion Chief Erickson. Is Lee Jones still in the building? No, he's over at the crime lab. I'll get him up here, too. I don't know, Friday. Maybe it'll work. It's got to. All right, now look. It's going to take a couple minutes to set this up. We've got to know what Connie's doing every second. Well, how about the dictograph in there? Adjoining offices should be connected with this one. Good. 
See if you can get it on without him seeing you. Get the receiver off the hook and leave it off. Right. You know, if it isn't off the hook, we won't be able to hear a thing in here. Right. Come on, then. This is Dad Brown, Police Department. Give me Erickson, Battalion Chief. Where's my brother? Still in his cell. Get with it, cop. You're long on talk and short on time. Get on with over here. Your brother doesn't want any part of this. We get him on the phone, and I'll tell you the same thing. I promised, Al. I told him I'd get him out. He didn't think I could do it, but I'm doing it. I'll make you a bet, Carney. We'll get your brother on the phone. He won't walk out of here with you. All right. Get him on the phone. Where are you going? Phone's over there. Have to use the dictograph. Have to have an okay from the chief. Al was still present. the phone. No operators. The building's been cleared, you know it. Yeah, I almost forgot. Okay, you can use the dictograph. This Friday, Chief. Carney wants to talk to his brother. Yeah, I know you'll have to send somebody over. What? Just a minute. 5801. Yeah. Right. Take a couple of minutes to set it up. Yeah, I'd like to talk to you. It's been a couple of months since I've seen him. We've always been together, me and Al, most of the time. Let's go and see if we can't hurry that call, Angel. you? It's a good idea, boy. It's 16 minutes to 9. Hey, cop. Yep. Forgot to hang up the dictograph, didn't you? I put the receiver back on the dictograph. Ben and I had failed to make good on the first step of the plan. into the office next door. Chief Sam Erickson of the fire department and Lieutenant Lee Jones from the crime lab were already there. We can't run a ladder up from the street. Too high, Chief? Best we've got is a 100-foot aerial. You figure 12 foot to this story, it'll take you up 96 feet, eight floors, and we've got the latest equipment. What's that idea you had, Lee? Sam, can you get hold of a pump here in a hurry? Sure, we've got a lot of scaling ladders, but you've got nothing up there to hook them on. You figure on dropping down from the floor above, is that right? That's right, and I figure a pump here would do it. Sure, we could make it faster than wind to sill up there, but you got a foot and a half ledge in the way. Now, what you want is a lifeline. Lower a man down on a rope, is that it? Lifeline, yeah. It's quick and it's quiet. Can you rig it so one of my men can do it? Sure. What's the risk? None, if you work it right. We'll strap on a life belt, two of my men will drop him down. What do you think, Lee? That's it. What do we do with that bomb when we get it, Lee? I figure that box Connie is holding is about a foot square. Now, here's what I'll do. I'll get you a bucket with a foot and a half mouth. It'll be full of water. I'll have it right outside the door to that office. When you get that box, place it in the water, and we'll get the bucket out of the building as fast as we can. Once we get the thing under water, we're in the clear, huh? I can't promise you that, but it's the safest way to handle it under circumstances. All right, that's it. Sam, you want to take care of your end? Yeah, right away. Leave. I got a detail to give me a hand down the street. When we get the bomb, we'll take it to a safe area and decommission it. All right, work as fast as you can. No choice. Friday. Yep. Can you handle that bomb? I can try. I'll take the rope. All right, that's the routine. And carry this with you, Romero. When you come down on that rope, you got one chance to make good. Slug him and make it count. There's no second try. Right. And Joe, yep. when you grab that box, you got to get it away from Carney before you can squeeze the trigger and then get it right down to the street. The elevator. Can you operate it? It's pretty simple. I can double check it. Do it now. Right. You better get Carney's brother for him on the phone. He seemed anxious. I'll call him. Get going. Right. Dad Brown, emergency. Let me talk to Fitzgerald. I checked with the elevator operator and then he was sent out of the building. Thirteen minutes to nine. The two volunteers from the fire department were standing by on the floor above. Lee Jones and Erickson were on their way up in the freight elevator with the necessary equipment. The phone call from the city jail was ready to be put through. Ben and I went in to tell Carney. You got Elwood with you? We told you we'd get him on the phone for you. The call will be through in a minute. A minute's a long time, cop. You only get twelve of them left. Elwood's going to talk you out of this. Oh, sure, sure. Everybody's going to talk me out of this. First was them other two cops, that little porky guy and that other monkey. Then it's you and this Dixie doughhead here. Now it's Elwood. Oh, come off it, will you? Get my brother over here. It's your brother, Connie. I'll get it for you. Stay put, you. Just going to get the phone for you. I'll take care of the phone. We'll just disconnect it. <laughs>
Now you get this straight, you dumb cops. I'm through with your rotten, stinking lying. Do you think I know what you've been doing next door? Now you listen to me. I want Elwood here and I want him now. Now you get him here before I blow you all to pieces. Who threw that phone out in the hall? I did. You want me to go out and pick it up? Connie, that's not going to get you anywhere. You're the big boss around here. Maybe. All right, all right, sir. I answered you. All right, big boy, I've got a piece of advice for you. You take your rookie cops here and you get it through their heads. I mean what I say. I want my brother over here in this room and you've got just nine minutes to get it done. Now you tell them that, will you? All right, Connie. It's your show. All right, we've got to work fast now. Jones, everything set with you? All set. The car's waiting down in the street. Erickson, your men ready? Upstairs, waiting. Now we all know what to do. I'll need somebody to give me a hand with Carney when he falls. I'll be in there with you, Friday. One thing you ought to know. What's that? Strong wind outside, about 20 mile an hour right now. That gonna loss us up? No, but it's gonna increase the sway. You gotta allow for it. How do you mean? Wind's coming from the south. We'll lower you just to the right of the window. If I figure it right, the wind will do the rest. Bigger risk? We don't control the weather. Better get upstairs. Lee, no use you sticking around. I'll give Friday a hand. No, it's my job. Got to keep you alive and decommission the bomb. Dumb joke. See you downstairs. What's the time? We got eight minutes left. You scared, Friday? Yeah. That makes us even. Come on. Thad Brown and I went back into the room with Vernon Kearney. Ben was going to make a try from the window on Kearney's right. Somehow, we had to try and keep his attention on us and away from that window. If anything went wrong and Kearney got out of position, the plan would fail. If Chief Erickson didn't estimate the force of the wind correctly, the plan would fail. I looked at my watch. It was eight minutes to nine. Anything we can say to make you change your mind, Kearney? I've asked you a hundred times. Now I'm ordering you. You're gonna get to a phone and have somebody send Elwood over here right now. I'm through waiting, now move. You ripped out the phone, Carney. Well then, find another one. I told you I'm sick of your two-bit stalling. We have until nine o'clock to make up our mind about this. You had until nine, but you didn't do what I told you. Now I'm cutting you short. You got just one minute to get a phone in this room where I can hear you call the jail and have him send Elwood over here. You said nine, Carney. All right, Joe. We'll give him what he wants. Bring in the phone from the next room. My brother's a prisoner. He's in custody. We can't place his life in jeopardy. You leave that up to L. We'll have to take it over here. Court won't reach. Sad Brown Egan. We want L with Carney over here at the city hall. Room 1104. His brother wants to see him. If he wants to come, get him over here. Leave it up to him. Yeah, you can use it for the elevator. And tell him to hurry. Yeah. Tell him to hurry. That's the only smart thing you've done all day. Now, why don't you go next door and try to figure out another angle? We'll wait for your brother, too. That's right. We're all going to sit here and wait for Elwood. If he don't show, you're going to see me pull the plug. Now, sit down. Right where you are, sit. Shut the windows. I don't want to catch me a cold. I can turn up the heat. So they put you. What's that? What's going on? Nothing, Connie. Just the wind. Shut up, you. There's someone out there. I can see your feet. Stupid cops. Pull him up. Get him out of there. Pull him up. Pull him up. Pull him up. You win. You bet I win. 
You didn't think I'd miss a trick like that, did you? Now, that one's locked. Now we'll get the other one. Did your brother, Carney? Yeah. Hi, Al. You're crazy, Vern. You're crazy. There's a million cops outside. People all over town heard about this. They're holding back the crowd. You'll never make it, either one of you. I got in this far, didn't I? We'll make it. Vern, you think we could do it? You. you. Get a car for us ready down in front of the building, a fast one. Move! Do what he tells you, Joe. You're not fooling, are you, Vern? Will that thing really blow? Four miles high. I'll never let you pull it. We're getting out. What happened? You spot me? Yeah, it's got to go fast now. We had to bring Carney's brother over from the jail. Are we still on time, Emma? We got four minutes left. How about the lead? Do you think you can do it? Try. Here's your gun. Oh, yeah. And the sap. Yeah. Got it. How are you going to do it? I try to catch him just above the right arm at the base of the neck. That should paralyze his right arm and give you a chance to get that box away from him. We use the same plan? Right. Oh, Ben, wait a minute. Yeah? The window on his right, he locked it. You'll have to crawl around and get in through the one on his left. You got it? Yeah, I got you. All right. Superior Court, Department 87, City and County of Los Angeles, State of California. In a moment, the results of that trial. The suspect was examined by five different psychiatrists appointed by the Superior Court and found to be mentally incompetent. 
Elwood Carney served the balance of his sentence with no time off for good behavior. <laughs>